Hi, my name is Mohammad Tariq, and in this lecture, we will examine some of the applications of binary trees, and more specifically, we will uh, we will study about Huffman encoding. There are different uses and different applications of binary trees uh, where we use binary trees, and in detail, we will see how Huffman encoding uses the binary tree. To reduce the data to compress the data. So let's start this lecture now. We have expression trees. Expression trees also uses binary trees for expressing or for representing the expression. So the this point says expression trees and the more general parse trees and abstract syntax trees are significant components of compilers. So binary trees are used by compilers. For parsing the expression. So, as you can see here, we have an expression. I will not go in the details of this expression and how this tree is formed because my focus of this lecture is, is on Huffman encoding. So, I will quickly go through and I will quickly give you some references that where trees can be used uh, and what are its uses, what different types of uses are there, and how. Binary tree can be helpful in different scenarios. So, to for evaluation of this expression, uh, we have this tree. We can form this tree, and uh, as I said, I won't go in much details. So, we have we have formed this tree, and with this tree, we can easily evaluate this expression. Right? The compilers can evaluate such expressions. Parse tree in compiler. So whenever we have an expression, let's say here we have an expression, and then the compiler creates a tree which is here. Okay, this is an example structure, and this is how the compiler forms the expression, expression tree, and solves the problem. So in SQL also, the SQL engine creates an expression tree using the query that we write. Let's say for example. Here we have a we have a simple case. Find the titles of the movies with the stars born in 1960. For this, we have a query here, and if this query has one field, is selecting one field, and we have two tables. Then we have a where clause also, and we have a and operator, right? So now how this tree can be. Uh, parsed and how the binary tree can help us uh, in parsing the tree. So here we have a parse tree. So the SQL engine, when when SQL engine will evaluate that expression or you can say that query, it will form a tree something like this. So it's just an example to make you to give you some examples and uh, the uses of binary tree, how the binary tree can be helpful. Now let's discuss about Hoffman encoding. What is Huffman encoding? Huffman encoding is actually a compression technique using which we can compress our data and then we can send the compressed data uh, to the receivers, to other machines, we can say, or to other applications. So, data compression plays a significant role in computer networks. To transmit data to its destination faster, it is necessary to either increase the data rate of the transmission media. Or to simply send less data. So we have two options here. One is to increase the data rate of the transmission media or to simply send the less data. Improvements with regard to transmission media has led to increase in the rate. The other option is to send less data by means of data compression. So this point is actually uh, the uh, our uh, point of uh, focus. So we can compress our data. This is what we can do when when application sends the, a data uh, between two channels. So when we send the data from one location to another, our application can compress the data, and this can be very helpful. For example, we have a sender which sends some data to our receiver. Okay, we have a receiver here. Now the data packets that we send here. That can be if we can reduce this data, then uh, we can send our data faster. Compression methods are used for text, images, voice, and other types of data. Huffman code is a method for compression of 
standard text document so our text document or you can say our text data can be compressed using Huffman encoding it makes use of binary tree to develop codes of varying length for the letters used in the original message so Huffman encoding is actually uses the binary tree and then in creates some codes of some varying length we will we will discuss about these codes later Huffman code is also part of JPEG image compression scheme the algorithm was introduced by David Huffman in 1952 it's a pretty old uh, technique as a part of course assignment at MIT we have uh, different other techniques now uh, we have some other latest techniques available but right now for the for the sake of this tutorial and we are actually discussing how the Huffman coding is working and what's the technique behind this to understand Huffman encoding it is best to use a simple example let's let's now reuse an example to understand this encode 32 character phrase traversing binary traversing threaded binary trees so we have a phrase traversing threaded binary trees and we want to compress this phrase if we send the phrase as a message in a network using standard 8 bit ascii code we would have to send 8 multiplied by 32 equals to 256 bits so we know that in ascii standard every character is of 8 bit okay either it's a b or whatever those all characters are 8 bit so if we have 30 so total characters in this phrase are 32 so that the, if we have 32 characters so the total bits that will be used it will be 256 using the Huffman algorithm we can send the message with only 116 bits so more than half of the bits have been reduced how that has been reduced let's see so we have an original text here we have an original text traverse this added binary tree and we have 33 characters which in which we are in also including a space and a new line character so we will count the number of occurrences of character for example let's take t for example right let's take t so here we have t so t a we have frequency of t so the frequency actually showing the number of occurrence of t in this phrase okay number of occurrence of t in this phrase so now count this is one okay uh this is two and threaded binary three okay this is three the total number of occurrence of character t is three okay let's uh, erase the numbers okay now let's check r so r is five okay so now let's check r one two three four and five okay so the total number of occurrence for r uh, is five so we have noted down the frequency so in this way we will note down the frequency of every character and we have also included the space so the space we have is three okay the space we have three spaces in this phrase so now once uh, we have the frequency of uh, the number of characters used in this phrase then we we will create a tree and how we will create a tree let so here as you can see i have a, a structure here and i have the lowest frequency characters uh, at the bottom then i have two right i have five i have three so i and i have one so i have arranged these and what we will do now we will connect these for example as you can see here v and y we have we have connected this and we created a node and we call that node 2 we assigned 2 to this node because we have added these two frequencies we have added 1 plus 1 and the resultant is resultant is 2 so what is 2 2 is actually a sum of these two frequencies in the same way we will connect other node and i will call this two also i will connect these two also right now i can connect these two also and i will call them four the new node 
I will assign 4 to the new node and then this and this is also 4 and then I can connect these two and I can call it 10 okay now I can connect these two right and what I can call I can assign 5 okay, 2 plus 3 to 5 right now what I can do is I can okay I can connect these two okay and I can six I can assign six okay now I can connect these two okay and I can say 15 I can connect these two or four and uh, I can connect These two, say eight, and I can connect these two, and six plus four is ten. Okay, now I can connect these two, and I can call eighteen, and now connect these two, and this node will be. 18 plus 15 is 13 and 3 okay so this is 33 and if you remember the total number of characters in our phrase including a space and new line was 33 okay, let's check right as you can see here the total number of characters we had 33 so now we have connected all these nodes and we got the total number here so this is a tree that we will have we have to form and we need to take care that the the root node should be equal to the total number of occurrences of of the characters right we need to take care of that so we create a tree something like this okay so now let me show you once again with the proper slide uh, with a proper connection so now we have we are connecting these two then we connected these two then these then we have four here and we connected these two also then these two okay and and then we have 33 as you can see here my when I connected the nodes, it was a bit different. Like, like we have a 19 number here, but in my case, so if you can see here, in my case, we I do not have 19. I have 15. Okay, so you can make connections differently, but you need to take care that the total should be equal to equal to the the size of the phrase. Now, there are a number of ways to combine nodes. Right, I have a note here. There is a number of ways to combine nodes. We have chosen just one such way. And as just as you to prove this, you just saw the way I connected is different than the one which I showed. Right? So here we have we have some different nodes. We have nine, then we have nineteen. I've connected different. But the result is the same. Now, once we have connected all these nodes, what's the next step? So, next step is start at the root and assign 0 to the left branch and 1 to the right branch. Okay, then repeat the process down the left and right. Now, what we are doing is we are actually assigning 0 to the left side and 1 to the right side. The same way we will assign 0 to the left side and 1 to the right side same way here 0 to the left side and 1 to the right side and we will do this for, for for this whole complete tree okay now now we have given numbers to all complete tree now what's the next step the next step is let's suppose let's take a so we will start from the root node we will start from the root node and we will traverse to the A. This way, 
this way and this way. So a is actually equals to 0, 0 and 0 because we have three zeros here. Okay, for t, for t, the path will be different. The path will be 0, 0 and 1. 0, 0 and 1. Right? So we will we will concatenate these numbers, we will concatenate these bits and we will assign that to that character where uh, where that that character is actually residing. Okay. For let's say for n for n the path we will have to take this is 0, 1, 1, 0. Okay, so for n we have 0, 1, 1, 0. Okay, 0, 1, 1, 0. So this is the path. So as you can see here, we have character code. We have every character has a code now. A has a code 0, 0, 0. B has a code 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. And that's how every character we have assigned the code. And I've just shown you how these codes have been assigned okay so notice that the first point is notice that the code is variable length so the code is of variable length for example this is this is equals to how many bits one two three four five this is equal to five bits now as the space is equal to three bits a is equal to three bits sorry the space is equal to four bits okay space equal to 4 bits so as you can see here there are different bits Z, uh, e is equal to 3 bits and g as you can see 1 2 3 4 5 is 5 bits the second point is letters with higher frequencies have shorter codes so as you can see here e e is of frequency 5 but the uh, the code is 3 there are only three bits used. Now, if you see G, G has five bits, but the frequency is very low. Frequency is only one. So, the letters with higher frequency, for example, E, have shorter code, right? They have some shorter code. The third point is the tree could have could have been built in a number of ways. Each would yield different codes, but the code would still be minimal. So it says that each will give some different codes when you form a tree with different uh, connections you will we will get some different codes but code would be minimal this code would be minimal as, as we just seen that when I connected the nodes those nodes uh, gave us some different uh, numbers but at the, uh, at the end the resultant was the same okay now what we have we have this code we have this code now and we will send this code to the sender uh, to the receiver okay with 8 bits per character the length is 264 with 8 bits if we will if we send this original uh, text to the sender so we are actually sending 264 bits but after applying Huffman encoding we are actually sending 122 bits and it's actually we it's an improvement of 54%. It's a reduction of 54% of data. So it's uh, it's an effective coding scheme, compression coding scheme. So up till now we have seen that how we can compress the data and what form it actually gets in, what form it takes after compressing the, the data. So in the next lecture we will see how we can send this data, how we can get the original data from this encoded string. I would like to specially thank and I would like to acknowledge Dr. Sohail Islam for the preparation of this lecture. I have taken help from his videos and presentation slides. Thank you for watching. I will see you in next lecture.